Hello everyone, welcome to our um, online talk today on doing research in the humanities. My name is Cecile Jablawe and I will be your host today. I, um, I've spent many years abroad um, in the UK um, representing the German Academic Exchange Service or DAD um, before coming, um, coming to Germany to a head office, um, being in charge of a research network and now uh, before joining the research in, in Germany uh, marketing team. I'm in charge of um, online marketing at the moment. Um, I myself have a humanities background, so I'm, I'm very pleased to uh, lead you uh, through today's um, event. Before I introduce um, our experts, um, I'd like to give you some practical information. We have high attendance numbers today, uh, which is great. But it also means that if you're attending live today and would like to ask a question, the only way to do it is by using the questions box next to the camera. So please note, we won't be able to react to the feature raised hand. I saw that um, a couple of people have used it already. Um, this online talk will be recorded. And the recording will be made available on the Research in Germany website soon afterwards. Uh, my colleague Gabriella will post the link to the recording in the in the chat later on and you will additionally receive an email with a link shortly after we finished. At the end of the session uh, you will be presented with a poll. This is a very short feedback survey consisting of just three questions. We would be very grateful if you could take a couple of minutes to help us improve our services for you and uh, I thank you very much in advance for your participation. We will uh, now um, go um, move on to to the to the real really interesting bit. Um, now let's get started. It's my pleasure to introduce our panel. A warm welcome to Professor Dr. Horst Simon. Uh, Horst, uh, you're a professor of linguistics at the Institute of German and Dutch Languages and Literature at Freie Universität Berlin. You will be able to give us an insight into the inner workings of a humanities department at the German University. Um, and apart from that, you're also a member of the GAD Scholarship Selection Committee and might also hold some useful information on application criteria or, or anything related to the application process. Um, Alexander Talovich. Alexander, you're a doctoral student of contemporary philosophy and cultural theory at the International Graduate Center for the Study of Culture at Gießen University. And you're currently on a DOD scholarship. So I'm sure many participants are keen to listen to your first-hand experience. Thank you for joining. Uh, then we have Dr. Christiana Haupt and Dr. Peter Hafke. Welcome. You're both joining us from the headquarters of Max Planck Society in Munich. Max Planck Society is a non-university research organization dedicated to basic research in the natural sciences, life sciences, and humanities. There are 86 Max Planck Institutes in total, um, of which um, about seven or so <laughs> are dedicated to the humanities. We'll find out. Or you're, you're shaking your is it is it the right number? <laughs> you you'll give it a you will give us a much clearer. Uh, uh, picture of, of the situation in a minute. Um, Christiana, you are head of doctoral and postdoctoral career development. And Peter, uh, you are in charge of scientific scouting within the human science section. Thank you both very much for joining. And last but not least, we've got Dr. Joachim Berger. Joachim, you're a research coordinate, coordinator at the Leibniz Institute of European History. Your institute is part of the Leibniz Association, a non-university research organization that holds 95 independent research institutes under its umbrella, all of which addressing issues of global societal importance. Um, Leibniz institutes conduct research, provide research infrastructure, and are committed to knowledge transfer. Um, there are a large number of institutes <laughs> within the area of humanities, and Joachim, represents one of them today. So thank you very much for joining us. Um, dear participants, um, before we start, we would like to found out, find out a little bit more about you. So um, you're going to see a poll 
here we are. Um, we'd like to know what your current career stage is. Well, thank you very much. I think we're seeing a clear tendency towards PhD students today. So we will try and uh, gear our answers to um, to this group um, uh, uh, when we when we refer to your questions. Thank you very much for for this little insight. Um, so now let's um, let's get into into the real business. Um, my first question to the panel is, um, why should one carry out research in the humanities in Germany? I mean, Germany, we know, is very well, well known for engineering and natural, natural sciences. And um, what uh, would you say uh, to somebody who is uh, considering this? Now, let's see who would like to make a start. Well, <laughs> the simple answer is, why not? Um, there's there's lots, of, lots of good academics in Germany doing all kinds of research that's interesting and relevant internationally. Um, you can do it in German, you can do it in English, so there are lots of people who are connected internationally in, in, German speak, in Germany. And I think one, one aspect that actually um, makes Germany stand out in comparison to at least some other countries like the United Kingdom is that um, in the human humanities is still um, highly regarded in 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 say in the, in the public as well as in the funding uh, uh, among the funders. So the idea is that you can do something like what I call blue sky research. In, in basically, you you study whatever you're interested in, and if it's an interesting topic, you can do a PhD on it. And it's good if it's socially, economically, whatever, relevant, but if not, it's okay too. As long as it's an interesting topic, you can do it. And I think that's something that, that Germany is, in a sense, more interesting than many other countries, that you can just do your basic research in the field that you happen to be interested in, irrespective of applicability and relevance to society. If it is relevant, good. If not, well enough. Thank you. That's a very interesting insight. I wonder whether you know this uh, would have been something a lot of people would have known. Um, how do, do the other participants uh, think about that? Can you? Can you? Yes, Peter. Please go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I can agree on on anything. Um, Horst just said. Um, I think for in general, Germany as a research landscape for any discipline is perfect. It's well funded, I mean, research freedom embedded in, in the constitution. But I, I also think it's, it has a long history of humanities research, which then also means that whatever discipline you're in, within the humanities you're interested, interested in, you will find a research institution. And that's, I think, a good prospect for anyone who's aiming to join, um, as was said. It doesn't matter whether it's, it's, uh, it is applied or not. If it's interested, interesting, you can find an institution and there's probably a supervisor who's an expert on the topic because it's a very diverse research landscape. Yes, Joachim, think, thank you very yeah. much. It's, and of course, we do have a variety of types of research institutions and academic institutions ranging from universities, academies, and research institutions outside university, which are all in a way of are networking and building centers together so you can easily um, change sides and uh, go from one institution to another. And I think the peculiarity of that. Maybe uh, we should try and explain as well. So what would be the difference? Um, uh, if you want to do a PhD and then you go to, to, to university or you have a choice to go to a research institute that is non-university, what, what will be the difference and will, um, what will be the outcome for the participant? Um, will the, the, the PhD look different if you do not um, you know, attend a university for your degree? Mm. 
maybe I can add something about the PhD. So what you should know as a international researcher that the um, that only the universities in Germany have the right to award um, PhD um, grades. So if you come to Max Planck Society to do your research there, or if you go to uh, or to Leibniz or to any other um, non-university research center or institution, um, finally the PhD um, certificate you will receive from a university. Well, there are strong connections, so you don't have to worry if you do your PhD with Max Planck or with Leibniz or any other institution. There are strong connections to uh, universities, and you will <laughs> definitely get um, be awarded, but you won't have a PhD certificate from Max Planck. You will have a certificate that you have done research, but the right to award PhD, um, PhDs is only with the universities at Germany. So maybe this is something you really should know if you come to Germany. Yes, Alexander. Yeah, thank you. I would I would add to this point um, that, uh, uh, for example, uh, as far as I'm concerned, in Gießen, we have this sort of a triple connection when it comes to, to our PhD process. The first point is university, the second point is faculty as a part of university, and the third point is actually working on institutes. So you have to be sort of um, uh, involved in, in all of the three aspects. So you are just, a, uh, uh, I would say that institute is a sort of a, of a hub, a sort of a scientific core uh, where you are actually like doing the most of the most of the stuff. But definitely, you're always connected with your Fachbereich, with your faculty, actually, and then to the university as a whole. So, like, you actually are always in this in this kind of triple process. Thank you. So, um, yeah. Now, let's kind of simulate. Um, I'm a PhD student, and I want to have a career in Germany. I want to become a professor. What would be the next step? Be patient um, and be aware of the fact that it might not turn out in the end because uh, there's, there's obviously there's much less, uh, that's much fewer professors than PhD, uh, successful PhD people. So there's a, it's a Uh, uh, well, it's a very steep pyramid. Um, uh, one of the important things is that if you've you've um, you've completed your PhD, you're a specialist in whatever topic it is, or special thing that you've you, you written your book about. Great, um, but to become a professor, you have to know more about your particular field. So um, you have to diversify your interests and to find at least a second topic. Uh, on which you can teach in the end, because in the end you have to teach about 10 hours a week, so for four or five courses, and they have to be on different parts of your field. So if you're a specialist in a very small area, nobody will want to hire you, because um, yeah, well, nobody, nobody, very few institutions would need a specialist in a very small subject. So the idea will be to do your PhD on something, and then to come up with one or two different topics in your own field, on which you pursue a second uh, research. And, uh, on that briefly, it's always good yes, to you, uh, Joachim, are you raising your hand? Yeah, thank you. All right, so I, I got that message. It's really hard, so I kind of um, adjust my expectations. Um, <laughs> I just want to be a successful researcher, so I'm, I'm doing my PhD, um, and I, <laughs> I want to be a successful postdoc. So what is the next step? Peter? 
Well, I would say it also depends on, on, on the discipline and on the field where you are. So, I mean, um, for bigger research, there is less research done in a group. It's still this one man, one woman show, and um, you're an expert in your field, whereas in like more the social science, behavioral science area, um, you need to be able to lead a team as a young postdoc that not necessarily comprises of people from your own discipline, but also adds expertise from other disciplines that are um, interesting um, for your research problem and that helps tackling the, the bigger picture in terms of the research question you have. And you probably need to think big, you need to strategize, what are you going after you did this and you did this, um, but just kind of for the three years that your the funding is available, you probably also um, have a to have I a think what is quite important is that you and always think uh, on the next step in your career. career. This is something mm -hmm. I, Thank I, you. I yeah. realized with many postdocs, so um, I saw that most of you are PhD, uh, doing their PhD, so probably your next step is a postdoc position, um, and either you do it in Germany or anywhere else. Very often I have the feeling as soon as someone has a postdoc position, then the person is so happy about it that it, that he or she doesn't think on the next step. And I think what is what makes a successful postdoc and what makes you successful for the next career step in, in, in academia is that you very early start to think of what could be the next step. That could be an application for a group somehow, or for a European um, funding, or for a um, W2 or W3 position in Germany. But what do you need for this? And for this, you really need to be connected, to be connected to the leading scientists or leading researchers in your field, be connected to your community, be well known with your um, topic uh, within your community, because as soon as a professorship is available, the people should think of you. They should think like, oh, this is Christiane, she is an expert on uh, junior scientists. I need to call her and tell her there's a position available. And I think this is some, a lot of postdocs don't have in mind that the postdoc time is about writing the second book, publishing a lot of articles, but also to get to know as an expert in your field. And I think as more as you're successful in this expertise and the more people you know, um, the more successful you are. And I think, you, and I think it's, it's for all fields very important that you don't addict to a country because I think research is so international or even humanity is becoming more and more international that you always should be on international conferences and look on different um, countries for your opportunities for the next step. So this is something I would like to add. So the, the perspective of um, internationalization and also networking is very important. So how um, I, I still got that image of um, of doing humanities in an ivory tower that I go and I study philosophy and um, I, I don't meet that many people. Um, is that still the case, or what is the situation like in Germany now? Then say that uh, we we got a lot of opportunities for funding. Um, yes, Alexander. Together, both uh, both DAD and uh, and my my research institute, the International Center, Graduate Center for the Study of Culture in Gießen, they funded a lot of international conferences for me from the very beginning of my of my stay and my research here in in Germany. So I kind of felt because I'm working on like on post and transhumanism, on, on philosophical notion and cultural notion of subject within these two. Um, uh, disciplines, uh, I would say, and uh, in this sense, like it's not, it's quite, it's not pretty much developed in Germany at this particular point. And uh, I just like I travel to, I'd say to to Japan, to to South Korea, to France, to um, to, to Iran. Actually, I, I I was in Iran at a conference of religion and technology. 
and uh, where I was talking about some theological aspects of uh, of understanding of of of, uh, of contemporary robotics, for example, robot Sophia, this this um, this new thing, and. Um, yeah, I'd say definitely that uh, 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 my particular center has, has helped me a lot uh, to, 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 to get connected uh, as much as possible. Now, of course, it's corona times and it's like very, very hard to, to, to make this thing uh, in analog setting, but uh, we, are, we are very connected. We are connected more than ever, of course, online now. So like our, our, our um, um, little, uh, uh, field is actually growing exponentially. And mm -hmm. if you're joining, Thank you. uh, if you're a member of, of a Maybe, um, yeah. research center Johan, at please. a university, or if you join a, um, an institute outside university, a research institute, um, you can be a member of a team in a research group or research area. Um, focusing on one thematic um, section where your PhD topic might just neatly and fit in, and uh, so you will still it will still be in. A, you can still go back. Yes, thank you. Um, Yes, I, um, I'd like to point out a brochure that is uh, on the Research in uh, Germany website. Um, it's a brochure on doing humanities uh, in, in Germany. Um, I sh I'm sure my colleague will um, feel it, put, put the link into the uh, feed uh, in a moment. And um, there you'll get a very good overview of you know the, the, the breadth of the research um, landscape in Germany. And as you as you mentioned, there are research training groups, the international uh, international training groups. Um, there are classes of excellence, collaborative research centers, uh, and so on and so forth. So it's a very varied landscape um, that one should should try and explore. And that we uh, very much uh, recommend uh, going on the Research in Germany website and and checking out all these. Um, these places you can carry out research. So it, it, it's really a matter of exploring what's available. Um, maybe let's go back to um, a go. Let's go a step back and uh, think about. So I I want to go to Germany, um, and I what what do I need to to have in terms of qualifications to be successful? Maybe that's too too broad a question, <laughs> or, or or Simon, uh, do you want to say yeah, something? Host, yeah. Host. Uh, Cecilia, well, the um, <laughs> it's it's very trivial. You have to you have to be able to read. Um, uh, but I mean, well, obviously we all can can read, but um, you have to to be able to stick to your um, to a particular problem that you have, and you have to. Um, I was just thinking about an English translation, but for for German, uh, in German there's um, an expression for that about you have to be able to sit on your own backside and stay there for for a certain period. So um, you have to pursue a certain your idea and not give up too early. I think that's the most. Well, of course you have to know the field and you know the methodologies and all that. But I think the most important thing is perseverance or something like that. So you have to to, uh, to be able to overcome intellectual obstacles. And if you think this is a, top, a difficult topic or this is a book I'm reading and I can't understand it properly, then it's, it, was not, it will not be a good idea to throw it away and say, well, no, don't, don't do that anymore, but to stick to it and to go back to the problem that you are, you are having and trying to solve it for a second or a third time and at some point you're going to manage to solve it and then you carry on with your research. So the idea of perseverance and uh, the ability to sit through a problem and uh, really think it through properly, uh, probably is the most important 
qualification you need in whatever field you're studying, whether it's humanities or sciences or anything. But as for most people who work in humanities, it's basically about reading. Well, we do. We are a linguist, so we do field work as well. So we, we engage with people. But for most humanities researchers, I guess it's mostly sitting. Yeah, thank you very much, Professor Simon, for, 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 for this. And I would, I would only add that as a yeah, sort of outcome of this, uh, of this competence that you actually, that you actually grow uh, throughout the time, it is the proposal. It is a research proposal, which is actually um, a sort of a final aspect of this whole competence that you develop through time. And this actually has to be very interesting. It has to be innovative uh, in a sense. And it has to sort of be interesting, pretty much interesting for for the pro professor that you that you want to contact and with with whom you want simply to to work because if they don't, they actually judge you, so to say, uh, uh, by your actual proposal. That's your research anatomy. That's the whole profile of yours. If if this doesn't work for the, the for the particular professor's interest. I mean, in this sense, you you lost this connection. You will you will have to make it to, to make it work. And this is your anatomy. This is what. And this is something I really like to 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 add, um, Alexander. This is a very interesting aspect because we, even me at Max Planck Society, yes, receive lots of emails every day, every week. Um, like I am a PhD student from anywhere, and here you find my CV. Can you tell me how to to get a postdoc? So, and this is something which is definitely not successful. And I really want to point out what Alexander said. So, please, before you want to come to Germany, think about where you want to go. Is there a place at the university or Max Planck? I think it depends on, always on the researcher you want to do uh, want to work together with. Um, so, first of all, find out where you want to go which is the institute, which is the university, which is the group you want to join. And then send one application and really tell the person about your research proposal, what kind of research you want to do. You shouldn't write very long emails, but your email should be very concrete about your research plan and about the topic you want to do. Because I think lots of, of um, PhDs make a lot of effort sending lots of emails to lots of institutes, but they don't succeed because I think the, it's, it's important to send some emails. Maybe you shouldn't rely on only one, one application, but even if you want to apply for fundings from the German um, academic, um, academic exchange service or from other funding agencies, you do need a place where you should go. And for this, you need to find someone who's interesting interested in the topic you want to do research with. So this is very important first step to find the place where you want to go and to make a self-marketing with a really good application to point out what is your interest, what is your research interest. Uh, yeah, sorry, I just I just wanted to add to this point. This is very important. Thing. Just I like think, a little oh, sorry, anecdote. Alexander, you, uh, like to uh, you have to first of all, you have to know the research profile of your professor. Just search it out. Just Google it. Try to find out what's actual the particular interest of this particular professor that you want to want to connect with. Uh, for example, I uh, sent the email to to one great scholar, amazing scholar in Germany. She's a philosopher. And I sent like my sort of trans transdisciplinary project, and she she said to me, "This is amazing. This is uh, I like this, but you know what? I'm a hard-boiled philosopher. That's not my thing. You know, it's too tr uh, it's too uh, transdisciplinary for me. So I had to search a little bit more about this. I was just too optimistic in a sense that it could work more or less, and so on." But, you know, she told me, you know, I, I have my particular field and I just simply don't.
So um, how you do? How do you make contact? I mean, you you've got this great research project in your head, and um, how do you find the professor that you you think is the right person for you? And also, can you just um, well, what type of relationship um, you know do you should you be seeking out? And 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 uh, maybe let's start with this question, and then I'll, I'll follow on with a few more questions. Well. Well, I would hope that if you have a good, good research topic idea for a research topic, you know this topic, so you know who has already published in this particular area. So that's probably the best way to approach somebody. So if somebody um, sends an email to me uh, trying to get into connection and to start a replication process, um, and writes about it, like Alexander said, says I'm I'm interested in a particular topic, which is, as the student says I'm interested in topic X. But this is something I have never worked about, so why should I bother with this particular person? Um, might be it's still an interesting thing, but um, it's not for me. So, so for the, from the student's point of view, the idea is that you write your, your field in your particular sub, sub area, and you come up with a certain number of names that are quoted time and again, or the people who have written in this particular area, and then that's the kind of person you approach. You find out where, at which university this per, or institution this, per, uh, this person sits, and then you write to this person and say, and say I'm interested in topic X, and then obviously uh, the, the address C will recognize his or her own topic uh, in that, and then it's in, you're interesting, and then you, you're the kind of person who will be able to succeed. Uh, so the idea is if, if you know your own field, you know who is in this field and who publishes in this field, and then you, uh, you will be successful. Otherwise, you might want to do a bit more research beforehand. So if you say, I'm Maybe to help you with your, um, sorry, Peter, I'll, I'll um, let you um, have your word in a second. I just wanted to add, maybe to help you with your initial research, if you don't know, you know, if you're trying to, you know, explore a new field, um, we should point out to the um, GAPRIS database that uh, my colleague will um, post uh, in a minute, uh, because many of uh, our participants have asked this question, so how do I get in touch with a relevant person? Um, in the ideal world, yes, um, you, you, you know that person already, but maybe it, it's quite helpful to, um, to have a bit of help um, through some database. Um, Peter, you would, you would like to add something. Uh, yes, it was mostly talked about um, approaching someone directly, so an individual researcher, but like if you want to start your PhD, um, there are also all the structured, institutionalized programs where there is the topic at the top of, um, yeah, let's say for us, the Max Planck School of Cognition. There, and there's regulated how the application works. There's um, in autumn, it starts. You find in the FAQ what um, documents you need to, um, yeah, submit, uh, how long your research proposal has to be. Then you don't necessarily need to approach people if you're shy or whatever. Um, so there's also this other way around, just kind of topic-specific institutions, graduate programs, or um, like for Max Planck, a research group leader program if you're an advanced and young postdoc with an idea that fits nowhere. There are institutions where you can submit your mostly interdisciplinary idea and uh, Yeah, thank you. Should we um, talk about the difference between individual and structured um, PhDs? Should we carry on? Yes. Um, Horst, would you like to say something about that? Yeah, I mean, the the German, German university system, going back to the 19th century, has a strong uh, tradition of doing what they call the apprenticeship model. So there is one professor and one PhD student, and they work together in a, on a particular topic. And the young the young researcher has one one person, the, the master, uh, who you follow. This is the, the traditional uh, traditional idea, and it still lingers around, and you still have people who do it in exactly this way. 
Uh, and it's in the sense, the good thing about this this model is that um, you can study on, on any, you can study any topic you like as long as you find somebody who is willing to discuss it with you. So um, that's a good thing on, on the one hand. On the other hand, uh, obviously um, it's uh, socially deprived and it's difficult to get uh, other people to discuss your ideas with you if you're the only person working on this particular topic. So the idea to have a more structured program to those graduate schools um, is the, the other way, which is, as I understand it, much less common in Germany than in the United States, for instance. Um, and they are always, as well as I see them, they are always uh, connected to a particular topic. So it's they are not on, say, on linguistics, but they are on the grammar of the relative clause, or on whatever uh, um, specialized topic that those uh, doctoral graduation school graduate schools are. And that's that's fine. So if you have a particular interest in your own field, um, in, in on a particular topic, and you find a research school that is working in this particular direction, the idea is that you get a more structured program where you have little courses and you have fellow PhD candidates who work on similar topics and all kinds of discussions available. Um, so in that sense, both ways um, are fine. Um, probably the uh, the best, best world would be to combine the, the benefits of both to find uh, somebody who, a particular individual with whom you would like to work and pursue your apprenticeship with this particular person, but who also is somebody who leads a little research group, has a lab where they discuss certain things, or who is somehow involved in a research culture at his or her own university or, or, or research institution where there are more people around. So it's probably not a good idea to go to a single professor and study with this person for the next five years and never meet anybody else. Uh, but most most researchers and most most academics will be connected in larger groups anyway. So when, once you get there, uh, you will always have a more or less, um, not necessarily a structured in the sense of courses and modules you have to take. and. Yeah, thank you. Maybe um, can we get an idea of how international your institutions are? Can you give us a, a percentage of um, international um, students at your particular institutions? Peter? I don't have the exact numbers in mind, but I know that for the International Max Planck Research Schools, I think the aim is to have at least 50% of um, students from um, everywhere in the world and so yeah, I, I would add mm -hmm. to Professor Simon's uh, 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 point that uh, our our aspect of of work uh, at the GCSE, our research center in Gießen, is quite a hybrid one. Uh, at one point, you work with one professor, of course, as your mentor, as your supervisor. On the other hand, we have uh, our structured program, but it's not like sort of uh, fully pre-structured. You know, like you are just getting some some product that, that some people there just uh, were thinking about what you need and so on. We create this program. We were invited to invite scholars with, uh, with with whom we we wanted to work, and then we created uh, uh, some environment for for master classes, keynote lectures. They they were being invited to come to to Gießen and to work with us. The point is, I'm interested in one particular scholar. I invited him or, or her, and uh, and he or she comes to Gießen, and we try to invite as much people as possible, just to try to present. Uh, something which could be of, of, of everyone's interest. So this is the way how we actually work uh, work there, and we're trying to, to make to make our own uh, structure of uh, of our structured PhD program. On the other hand, of course, this is a traditional work with your with your supervisor, and you you're working on your research together. So this is the first point. The second one, of course, yeah, our our institute is heavily international in the most positive sense of the term. So yeah. I suppose that would be the well, case for Leibniz as probably, well. I don't know, Joachim, would you like to add something? Yeah. 
possible. Um, I can take my own view of, of U European history, which is international in its mission already, at least European. Um, but we have a, we, we a program for short and middle term fellowship, six up to 12 or 18 months, and uh, about 60 to 70 percent of our fellows are from, from, from non German. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I, I mentioned that I don't have the exact figures, but about half of our PhD candidates actually had part of, had most of their education outside of Germany. So some of them, of those half of those people, they who went to school outside came to Germany to study there and do their MA in Germany. But there are also people who only come for the PhD to Germany. So about, Yeah, thank you. Shall we move on to the topic of funding? Um, the uh, German Academic Exchange Service obviously is known for offering funding for all career levels. Um, but uh, as we've got Max Planck and Leibniz and uh, and also uh, individual universities here, sh shall shall we get a uh, quick uh, kind of overview of what you've got to offer? Peter, please. Um, I would say there are a couple of opportunities. First of all, you have to realize that every Max Planck director has its own department, independent department with its own resources. So there, there's the opportunity to be hired if you look for, for jobs on the Max Planck Institute websites. The directors themselves may have staff with third party funding and look for individual hires. Then you have the structured programs for PhD like Max Planck schools, international Max Planck research schools, where you can apply and provided within the program a um, subsidiary contract, like a Fördervertrag, which provides funding for three years of your um, PhD. And um, then the postdoc groups that, uh, for group funding for you and I don't know, one or two doctoral students, postdocs. And um, yeah, so a lot to offer, I would say. And you will find that information in the central place. Where would I go? Which website would I consult? Yeah, maybe Christiana um, or, or, or the team, or we could later yeah. post it. But yes, on the individual Max um, Planck Institutes, you find it on the mpg.de homepage. There is a career button, and then you can select your career stage. And there you find all the programs and the booklets about funding opportunities, the talent If I may, um, Alexander, um, then I, I um, add directly. Yeah, thank you, um, Alexander. The, oh, the uh, Christiane, did you want to add something? Um, in, within the Max Planck Society is mostly done by the um, institutes, by the 86 Institute itself. So it always makes sense, first of all, to find someone who is willing to work together with you because the institutes themselves, they have also funding opportunities. For PhDs and postdocs, we don't have uh, a lot of central money to fund um, special positions. So first of all, you should go to our website and find the institute which is fitting to your research interest and then get in contact with, with the people there. And then um, they also have um, funding opportunities. So I, I just wanted to add this thing that I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be you, sending Alexander. the link now for our GCSE uh, grant for the next uh, for the next year. So we we grant there uh, up to six scholarships and 20 memberships of of our institute. So I'm going to be sending this right now. Thank you very much. Um, Joachim, uh, how about funding PhD, from Leibniz? Um, for the whole, full period of a PhD, like three or four years, the same applies to Leibniz as to the Max Planck Gesellschaft, as has been ex explained previously. And uh, for there's various opportunities for short-term fellowships if you 
want to come to Germany and to an institution for like one up month up to 12 months where you can approach also approach either the various institutes or the Leibniz graduate schools um, and the uh, Leibniz research um, alliances. Yeah, thank you. Um, I think my colleagues, they are adding some uh, useful links to the chat as well. The DID or Research in Germany have a, a number of databases that are, are very helpful to consult and to find um, positions and, and funding. So um, do um, take a close look at the links that um, we're posting here today. They are very helpful. We're using them every day uh, uh, when we uh, when we uh, answer queries from around the world. Um, Horst, did I see you raise your hand or wanting to say something or? Yeah, no, no, sorry. Um, one thing that has not been mentioned, I think, was that you can also apply for various individual um, funding opportunities with with lots of foundations that are uh, around in Germany. So it's, it's one, of, one it's the DRD itself, but there's also um, all kinds of foundations that are either completely privately funded by whatever company there is, or by, the, or by various um, social and political institutions that uh, provide funding for individual PhD careers. So and, and, uh, I think that the DRD actually has a website, uh, has a, um, a link on their website where they have a a database of all those different institutions that do offer individual funding for PhDs. So if you're not into a particular research group uh, or a particular research in institute, but if you want to work with a particular individual professor at, an, at a university, you can get your own individual funding from any of those foundations. And I think there's dozens of them that do offer um, opportunities. Um, of course, the hitch about it, about all these things that we're talking about right now, about funding, is that uh, you have to do some some research before you actually do get the funding because the idea is that uh, you, you can't just say I'm a very good MA, I did my MA in a perfectly in a perfect way I'm a very good student now give me money to do a PhD but you have to have your you already have a, a research plan a topic and a research plan and a very detailed idea of what you're going to do in those next two or three or four years of your of your career stage. Um, that's what you need for, for for being able to apply for it, and then it takes about half and half a year until you actually um, get a result of whether the application process was was successful or not. So you have to plan somewhat in advance, of course, uh, which makes it a bit difficult because there's somehow uh, it's a circular thing. First, you have to do everything for yourself, and you have to pay, uh, have to fund your own pre-research. Uh, to write your research application, then you have to wait for a certain period, and then hopefully you get it. Uh, then you can actually start for the three years of your of your funding. Yeah, I uh, absolutely agree with that. Um, also from my experience of working at the um, DRD London office where I was in charge of uh, research funding for senior academics uh, and, uh, and doctoral students and postdocs, um, I, I totally agree. Um, you have to have um, a very clear research proposal at the time and you need to start querying or uh, uh, getting in touch with the office uh, or with the institutions uh, about a year in advance, I think, um, and that to be on the safe side, uh, to be on the safe side, it's, it's got to be a year in advance, then you find out what the conditions are, um, you, you will then still have time to uh, contact um, the person because you need to have a contact person in Germany as well. Um, so uh, yes, these are all things to be considered and um, to help you find funding. You, you, you mentioned, uh, Horst, that there's a wealth of uh, places to go to. We have this uh, database which is called um, Funding Guide. Uh, and it, this, it, this includes uh, almost every source, <laughs> every funding source you can think of. Um, uh, so you, you, we will probably post it in a second um, in the chat. Um, it's definitely worth uh, um, going through through the uh, the, the offers on on that database. 
Christiana, did you want to say something? No, sorry. <laughs> and anybody else on the topic of funding? Didn't see my hand. Sorry. So just uh, one yes, one Alexander. thing that, that should be considered as important. Just don't try to mix up just ideological or somehow some some agendas when you when you when you simply try to apply for some things. Don't. Uh, don't apply for, for example, together for, with uh, to Lo Rosa Luxemburg and to some very conservative Christian organization, something like that, with uh, like with different stories. There are people that there are sometimes same people in the committees, and they could see. I mean, come on, come on, what's this? What that's uh, this roller coaster of ideological uh, uh, presentation of yours? So it it can be a problem. I'm 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 saying I'm telling that from from the experience because I know some people that did that and it was just like not cool so just like don't don't present yourself in two different ways just like try to uh, at least just uh, sort of believe in where you actually try to apply in values and and and, and all the things and agenda try to fit to this agenda with because it's going to be your future it's you're going to be involved there so if you don't sort of believe in this kind of proposal that you are actually proposing it could be a problem. So just try to be like honest and again persistent, of course. Would you say that um, there are noticeable differences in research culture uh, when you look around the world and what is specific for Germany? Is there anything that you could mention? Since we all aim to work internationally, maybe that just is not the case. <laughs> but may maybe you uh, uh, did observe something. No, you're, you're working too hard now, so I don't think there is any, <laughs> any obvious <laughs> difference. Then that's that's okay. So oh no, okay, Peter. Yeah, maybe um, it's just personal observation, I don't know how valid this is, a uh, different culture when it comes to discussing research in, in colloquia, mm -hmm. coming from, from Germany, maybe it feels like in the US it's more open, more friendly, and everything is great, um, and then criticism is, is um, less direct, maybe, uh, whereas maybe um, by the, the straight comments that um, Germans tend to have, maybe Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I think so. It's it's difficult to, to generalize, of course, because individuals are different. All of them are individuals and different. Um, but uh, one thing that I could say for myself, and I know lots of colleagues who probably are similar in that respect, is that I don't like to be followed. So I have great ideas. I have um, I've got wonderful. I'm a wonderful and great international important academic. But if my PhD candidates say exactly the same thing as I do, they're not interesting. Um, so the important thing is they have to find their own take on a particular topic, and it's not a good idea to to write and to to pursue the topic of your research of your supervisor too closely. It's of course uh, it has to be in a general area, and you have to be in the same spirit, but in the end, uh, the idea of a, of a good PhD candidate would be that that's a person who pursues his or, his or her own ideas in the way that this particular individual young researcher wants to see the world and wants to become an independent young scholar with their own mind and not so much doing what the, the supervisor wants them to do. But I, I understand that there are differences in supervisors in this particular respect. But I, I, my experience is that in, in some other cultures that I've, I've watched, the, the intellectual connection used to be much more of um, the, the, the young.
Yeah, thank you very much for this very good uh, piece of advice. Um, it sounds like a great takeaway message for our participants um, because I'm moving on to, we're, we're five minutes uh, uh, away from uh, finishing the session. I'd like to ask you actually to um, give a takeaway message to our participants, um, you know, extraction from what we've said today. Can you think of something that would be helpful to, to consider? in the next steps. Shall I start with you? Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Very simple. Be yourself um, and find your, own, find your own way in what you're doing. Because, uh, in particular, when you do a PhD or a postdoc, it's a, it's a long process. It's many years that you work on a particular topic. So make sure that you're really interested in the, kind of, in, in the proposal that you're doing and in the topic that you're doing. You have to do it for a certain number of years and nobody will do it for you. So it's your topic and your career that you have to pursue with your own personality. And you have to I think that's, uh, I, I find out that this is very important from the very beginning. I have to find out what is it that I am interested in and what is it that I want to think about for the next couple of years. Uh, Maybe Alexander, you know, you uh, representing, you know, the um, the 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 current um, uh, person doing this. What what would you say? What Thank you so what much is for your the takeaway? Question. I I would say just be persistent and try not to apply to just one place. Just uh, uh, try to uh, uh, I don't know, like just to um, uh, how to put it, like just. Uh, uh, try not to be stubborn. It, uh, it could be negative, but be persistent. Be really persistent. It 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 may. It, uh, I mean, it, it may be just more than one year. I mean, this this whole process, maybe two years or so. But if you really want to to go somewhere and do your research, I'm almost. Thank you. What about our non-university research institutes? Do you have different sort of advice? Joachim. Oh, sorry. Peter. I wouldn't say different. Um, do research on a topic that is dear to your heart, because if money is gone, then you're still, at least you have the motivation to work on it and um, pull through. Um, and then money comes later. But um, do stuff that you want to do for a long time that's interesting to you. And especially for the humanities, thinking about interdisciplinary work at, at Max Planck. If you have the opportunity to learn skills from different disciplines, take it. It doesn't hurt. Thank you. Yeah, well, Joachim, do you have a takeaway message? Language is not a tool, but is the object of your research. So don't be afraid of reading literature and sources in as many languages as you can. It's enriching and rewarding. That, that's brilliant. Uh, <laughs> I, I think um, this is a um, very, well, very good. Is so good things already yes. there. So <laughs> Preferably like German as well. Um, <laughs> Um, get connected Christiana. to the important people of your field. So this is how, when I did my PhD and a uh, short time of postdoc, um, I think the most inspiring things were going to conferences, getting connected to people who already did the research I wanted to, to head on, um, or go for. So um, I think networking is very underestimated in, in the humanities, but I think you really should get in contact, even if you're a master's student and thinking now of a PhD, if you have the opportunity. And I think now with this all this virtualization of conferences, it's even easier to get connected than harder uh, because you don't need to travel. Try to, to get connected to the fields you want to do research in, to the sometimes uh, like research societies in, in your field and try to get um, touch, in touch with as many people as possible doing research on the field you like because then you will find the right place if it's in Germany or somewhere else and you find also the right people giving you advice and I think this is important for the whole whole career um, 
to, to, to know the right people at the right time. And this is something you really can start as a student already. Thank you very much, Christiane. Thank you to everyone for this very, uh, very helpful piece of advice and for, for all your contributions today. I'd like to point out um, the recording of this online talk will be made available shortly on the Research in Germany website. So if you want to recap on something or share it with your network, then please do so. On our website, we will also publish a list with useful links that you've seen here in the chat. Um, the link to our website will be sent uh, to you via email one, uh, approximately one hour after, uh, after this event. After closing the discussion, a short uh, feedback questionnaire will appear. And you, uh, as I said uh, in the introduction, you're very welcome and we would very much appreciate if you could participate in this. So once again, uh, to our uh, panelists, thank you so much for your time, for the insights. I think we've understood uh, a lot more uh, about uh, doing hum humanities research in Germany. And if there are any more questions, please go to Research in Germany 